So many of you have asked me um, if I can show you the techniques that I use when I'm painting skin and how to make it look believable and alive because many times when I look at beginners paintings the skin tends to look a, a little bit dull or lifeless. So that's basically what I want to show you in today's video. So I'll run you through how I created this illustration and hopefully by the end of this video you will have somewhat of an understanding on what to do to create believable and good looking skin. So here we go. The first thing that I want to show you is how to use color. Some very basic principles that you need to follow in order to make your colors pop. I prepared a color wheel up here so let me actually zoom into the color wheel here. And this is really easy to understand but it's really important as well. Basically on the top right you see the warm spectrum and on the lower left you see the cold spectrum. You have six primary colors, yellow, orange and red, green, blue and violet. And basically red and blue are your primaries and orange, yellow, violet and green are your secondaries. But let's just call them primaries because they're like the most important. And so yellow, orange and red are warm colors, green, blue and violet are cold colors. And they are important because when you're painting and your, your light source is warm, you want your shadows to be cold and vice versa. So if your light source is cold, you want your shadows to be warm. And this doesn't apply to every situation, but most of the time this is what you want to follow. I'll show you in this example over here in this painting what I mean with that. So her face is in light and the light is warm. So I'll show you. So her face has some, some yellows, some reds, some oranges. So her face is mostly in warm light and her shadows down here are bluish violet. So this is cold and her face is warm. And so you want to keep that in mind when you're painting. If your light source is warm, you want your shadows to be cold. And if your light source is cold, you want your shadows to be warm. That really makes an image pop. It, it's a really easy um, principle to understand and to apply, but you need to know it. And many beginners, they, they really don't know about these things, even though they're really simple to, to apply to your paintings and they make such a huge difference. You don't have to fully understand the whole color spectrum and how it works, but slowly kind of ease into it and try to understand the basic rules that, that apply to color. So just remember, if your light source is warm, you want your shadows to be cold. Next, I'll just run you through how I created this illustration and the steps I've taken and what went through my mind and why I've done certain things that I've done. So in order to do that, I'll just hide um, the, the finished piece. And so what you see here, let me actually hide the base color. So this is the original sketch. It's not too, too detailed. It's pretty loose, but it has enough information for me to get started painting. And also a quick tip is to maybe have your sketch in a slightly reddish tone. It helps later on when you're painting to make it look a little bit more, more um, natural and a little bit more human. So I created a base layer and this is just a flat color and most of the time it's also the skin color. And so I set the skin color first before I start painting anything else. And with the skin color, what you want to pay attention to is that it's not too saturated and not too desaturated and not too light and not too dark. So you want kind of a mid value, something that is comfortable to look at. If you look at the color wheel up here, it's a pretty natural and, and and nice color. It, it's not something that's too bright, um, not something that's too saturated, not too dark. It, it's kind of like a really comfortable mid value. And so next up, I like to also give all of the other things a flat color. So her hair color is going to be a flat color at first, her eye color, her lips, any accessories that she wears. I'm going to give these things a flat color. So let me just show you the layers and make them visible. For example, here, we have her lips and her eyes and I'll just keep going like this. And what else is there? Her ear pods. And so I gave everything a flat color. These act as my base layers. And from there, I just started shading and, and kind of take little baby steps. You don't want to go in there and expect it to be um, like finished in, in 10 minutes. You want to really take it one step at a time and work towards your goal in, in small steps. These are the base layers and then from here I can start shading slowly. And what I do when I'm shading is, so many beginners what they do is they take the skin color and then they just use a darker color to, to paint on top. 
and obviously that's not going to look pretty good because it kind of looks muddy and it doesn't look very natural and nice and it kind of flattens out the whole image it makes it look very dull so you don't want to have muddy colors and in order to avoid that what you do is you need to shift the hue of the color so right here that's my skin color and then I shift hues to another color and then make it slightly darker and then it looks way more natural when I'm painting. So do not only use lighter and darker versions of your base color to paint. Um, it's going to look very dull. So I'm going to show you my, my very first shading layer. So this is my very first level of shading and it's pretty basic. And right now it, it looks pretty, pretty terrible, I would say, but that's a part of the struggle. So in the beginning, most of your paintings will look kind of bad, but you just have to fight through that phase and um, yeah, have good faith and hope that it's going to work out in the end. So this is the first layer of shading that I apply. And you can see that I didn't go overboard. I, I was really cautious and, and I paid a lot of attention and tried to hit the main points of shading. And this is really important. You don't want to go in there too fast and, and do like final touches. You want to see what works and what not. And also when you're painting females, you don't want to put in too much shading because it starts to make them look a little bit old. So you want to have a nice balance between soft and hard shadows and edges. And I'll get into that later. But for now, just keep it simple and one step at a time. So what I do next is I do the same thing for all of the other layers and I just keep going like that. So here's a simple layer of lighting and I had a reference for this painting and I knew that the lighting was coming from the top right. So I was just adding a simple layer of lighting and then I just kept going. I added some basic shading to her hair. Again, really basic, but you can see that the more layers of shading that I've added, the more it comes to life. So first layer of shading, second layer, it looks already much better than before. And then the third layer of shading to her hair, it makes a huge difference. So as you guys can see, I don't rush it at all. I take it one step at a time really slowly. And so what I do at about this stage is I like to start deleting parts of my sketch. And so I deleted parts of my sketch and this is what's left. So I got rid of most of my sketch basically. And then I just kept working on it. Another layer of detail, another layer of shading. You can see now I'm starting to shade in her nose ring and some more lighting to her hair and, and her eyebrows. And I just keep going like this. Now I'm adding, and this one is crucial, this step is crucial. So right now you see that I basically only have like four different colors, five different colors, and her skin is looking pretty lifeless. I mean, the shading is, is pretty nice, but there's no life to it. If you look at a photograph, there's something about it that makes it look believable. And so we need to replicate this when we're painting. And this is crucial, this step. So with my next layer, you can see that I'm adding pinks, reds, and, and oranges. And the reason for that is the physical skin on a human is just a thin layer. And underneath the skin, there's blood, bones, and, and, and flesh. So you need to let that shine through the skin. And so if you look at a person's nose, most of the time it's kind of orangey reddish because there's blood under the skin in the area of the nose and also around the ears and stuff. And sometimes you see a really bright light shining through the ears. For example, have you ever like took a torch and let it shine through your fingers and you see kind of the light shining through and it looks kind of orangey reddish? That's because it's shining through your skin and your skin is basically translucent. So it lets the color underneath show through. So that's really important. You need to pay attention. And that's why I said you need to study color and you also need to study some anatomy to know where to place these colors. And so I added pink to her nose because underneath the nose or underneath the skin of the nose, there's blood and, and it's constantly running through there. And so it shines through. And, it, and it's really important to, to know where to place these, these colors. So next, I need to add depth to my painting because I don't want it to look flat. And so in order to add depth, I need to add contrast to my painting and I add contrast by adding darker colors to it and brighter colors. So whenever there's contrast, it adds sharpness and also depth. Here I'm adding darker colors and you can see that it starts to pop instantly. It makes such a huge difference. And also you can see there's a really bright orange. 
it's because there's the translucent skin and the ambient light is shining through and so you see that orange color shining through of the skin. And so it's kind of like the example I said before where you take a flashlight and you shine it through your skin of the finger and you see that orange color, it's because it's shining through the flesh and your, your skin and so it creates that orange color. And it's really important to kind of paint in those, those illusions and, and those effects because it'll make your skin look believable. So my light source is, is right here. It's coming from the top right. This is my light source. And so light is basically, or shadow is basically an area where light doesn't get to. And so this time I'm just adding a few more shadows. And so the light is coming from the top right, as I said. And so you can see light right here on her eyelid. But what I've done with the last layer is I added some shadow here on her eyeball because her eyelid is on top of her eyeball and is throwing a shadow onto her eye. And so you need to pay attention to small things like that. And the more you pay attention to these things, the more believable your paintings will look. And the more you know about these things, the the better impression you will leave to, to the viewer. And, and sometimes the viewer doesn't know what makes an image good. They just don't know, but they, they have a sense for a good image. They just can't tell what's good about it. So it's you, the artist, who needs to create that perfect illusion and kind of fake reality with what you're painting. So if you noticed, this is my sketch layer up here and all of the colors are still underneath my sketch layer. So I never paint it on top of my original sketch. And I like to do this because it means I don't, I don't have to commit to anything that I'm doing yet because I still have my, my sketch on top of everything. Now, obviously this doesn't apply to traditional painting. So if you're painting with oils or acrylics, you, you obviously can't keep your sketch on top of your paints unless you have a really thin layer of paint. But when you're painting digital, you have the freedom of applying filters of going back of, of having your sketch on top of everything. So use these advantages when you're painting. And now I start painting on top of my sketch for the first time with this painting. And what I do is I start adding detail to a hair and you'll see this makes a huge difference to the painting overall. It just adds a big, a big um, layer of realism to the whole painting. So if I just turn it off again, and turn it back on. But if we zoom in, it's actually not a whole lot that I've changed. I just added a few single strands of hair. But it's the small details that make a huge difference. And I like to keep these small details until the end of my painting, such as highlights. I, I don't add them while I'm painting, I add them at, at last. So, because highlights make your image really pop and those are like the icing on the cake. It's kind of like the cherry on top. So keep them for last and see how they make your image come to life. With the next layer, I'm actually showing you the highlights that I've added to her eyes and just see how much life she gets from it. So it just makes it pop. There's something about highlights that just finalize your image. So at this point, I could basically call it done. I just wanted to add one more layer of detail before I was really happy but even if I showed you this painting right now, you would probably like it. But to me personally, I needed an extra layer of detail for me to be happy. And that's what I've done. So the next layer is the last layer of, of, of detail and painting that I've added to this illustration for me personally to be happy and to call it quits. And so this was my final step. And to be honest, it's really not a big difference. It's just a few small edits, but I needed these for me personally to be happy. And so what I've done, if we look at this step and the last one, I edited her eye. I, I, I just thought it was too low. So I kind of lifted it and to kind of balance it out with the other eye. And I also just cleaned it up around the edges. And this was just a personal thing. So you need to find that, that point where you say, I'm happy with this. And this is different from person to person, but don't get caught up in, in this endless cycle of, I need to keep working at this. It's not good enough. Sometimes just call it quits and move on, move on to the next painting. You don't want to like get caught up a week in one painting and, and not get anything else done. I, I would rather create something that's not a hundred percent perfect, but maybe 80% and I get to work on the next piece because to me, quantity 
goes over quality when it comes to getting better at drawing. So if you're working on on a client commission, then definitely you want to give it your all. You want to do like 100%, maybe even more. But when you're working on personal pieces and you're just trying to get better, then don't focus on perfection. Focus on quantity, really. Like do as much as you can. And that's, to me, that's one of the, the best ways to get better in a short amount of time. So this is basically the end of the tutorial. And hopefully you have learned something by watching this video. This is my first tutorial. I've never done a tutorial before where I tried to teach somebody a technique when it comes to painting. So I hope it wasn't too terrible and that you guys were able to learn something from it. Thanks for watching my video. I really hope you, you got something out of this and that you found it useful. And as always guys, I hope to see you in my next video and I love you with all my heart and soul. Peace out.